So Ruth, how and when did you become Cherie Blue? Well, actually, it was on the Lords of Acid tour um, when I was with the Thrill Kill Cult. We used to go to their bus and everything. And um, there was this interviewer that came and <laughs> he said, who are you? And I said, oh, my name's Cherry and I did the Thrill Kill Cult's laundry. And um, I'm Jackie Black's personal assistant and I scrub all the gussets. And so that's where I got Cherry. And then it, kept, it was Cherry Pop Tart. And then it became Cherry Blue because it was Miss Black, Jackie Black, and Miss Blue, Cherry Blue. So it was Thrill Kill Cult named me. I guess, how would you describe yourself, a uh, chemical messiah, your debut record? Well, the chemical messiah is... I got the idea from a book written by John Allegro, who used to be a professor at Manchester University. He wrote a book called The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross, and it was about an ancient, more ancient language than Greek and Hebrew in the Samarian... Um, it was in Samaria and it was like an ancient magic mushroom cult and he reckons that the Old Testament was basically a layer upon layer of um, mushroom text for the mushroom cultists at that time who had to be who got dispersed because of the Roman Empire and all that kind of thing so I thought that was a pretty cool idea myself so called it the chemical messiah magic mushrooms man take them take them take them they're so good for you <laughs> that you've done some exotic dancing before. <laughs> well, yeah, like it's, like, about it? it's like, okay, so I want to finish like the Lords of Acid thing. Uh, they didn't pay me. I'm still waiting to be paid, you motherfuckers. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so what's a girl to do, you know what I mean? It's like, I can dance. I've got the boobs. I've got a pet snake. It's good money, man. It's good money. I'm not ashamed about my body. I guess, uh, have you ever had any diva uh, moments like in, Blue. I guess, in any of the projects you've had, Lords Vast, it's real cool, cool. I think the most, like, or the most name dropping I can do is when I snogged Anthony out of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He was, he thought I was a waitress and I didn't know who he was and he was like, slid up to me at the bar and it was like, oh hi, blah, 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 this party's boring. I was like, yeah, 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 what a drink. Like, four double scotches later he had his tongue down my throat and then it was like all these people photographing us and um, this woman came up to me someone from um, someone from the media thing and said oh my god that was great that was great did you plan it and I was like no and you're like do you know do you know who that and he ran off you see and I was like he was like that was Anthony from the Red Hot Chili Peppers and I was like cool I've got it going on yeah <laughs> So is this your first solo tour, right? Mm hmm It is? How's it going so far? It's going really good. I mean, I think, you know, people don't really know about it. And then they come and they see, you know, Levi from TKK. And we've got DJ Hoodie from um, Voodoo, the supporting act. And they're like, oh, wow, what a surprise, you know. We didn't expect it. And, and we're just like, there's no pressure. And we're just like dancing around and having a good time and people have been coming up and saying it was you know oh we really digged it and yeah it's great Site, do, you, do you feel that being, you know, a lead vocalist for Lords Bassett has been a blessing or a curse for your music career? Um, oh no, I mean, I don't, I don't regret anything I've done. I mean, I, I regret the way I've been treated, but they thought they'd never see me again. You know what I'm saying? So, ha 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 ha. <laughs> I'm back, and I'm using your name. What do you think about that? Baby, <laughs> I know. I keep I keep leaving them rude messages on the wall in the <laughs> and telling all the DJs like to play my stuff, so they'll be like listening to it before they go on stage, and they'll be like, Argh. I guess it's kind of early to tell, but 
where do you think you can go with this project that you're working on? Do you think this could be something long-lasting? Well, I, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, my expectations weren't high. You know, I wrote this album because I needed to. You know, I needed to like write it, and nothing was going to stop me. And I just did it. So whatever happens from now is is okay with me. If people dig it and it doesn't go too far, that's fine. If people really dig it and you know make a bit of money, then even better. But you know, I'm I'm happy just just doing my thing, really. You know, <laughs> yeah. But buy my album, buy my album, buy my album, please. <laughs> All right. Apart from that, do you have anything else to say to your fans um, before we go? Yeah. Um, take magic mushrooms. They're really, really good for you. Mm. <laughs> they expand your consciousness. Mm -hmm. They connect you with another dimension. And most of all, they connect you to your path in life. And I know I sound a bit hippie. And I know I drink and do all <laughs> other kinds of things, but they're the best, man. They've done wonders for me. Look at me. <laughs> do it, baby. <laughs> do it. Oh, and also, read Terence McKenna, The Archaic Revival. The Archaic Revival by Terence McKenna. It's the most fantastic, wonderful book in the whole universe. And that's it. Thanks, Ruthie. Kick ass.